You're locked into Apple Music right now. I'm Nadeska on FaceTime with Cash Page. Her debut album, Teenage Fever, is out Good. right now. Girl, how are you feeling? Man, I am feeling amazing. This is my first project. Um, well, my first album, actually. And so it's just like, I'm very overwhelmed. And there's been a lot of greatness happening around it. So I'm just really excited to drop it and let my, you know, my fans hear it. How long have you been working on this project? When I dropped my um, project, Park Car Combos, last year in November, it was kind of like, then. I just was like, you know what? Next project, now we're like, we're locked in. I'm always on to the next and just trying to be 10 steps ahead. That quickly, huh? And has it been challenging for you recording yeah. over the, the past few months and weeks? Have you been able to get in the studio with everyone you wanted to hook up with? Um, Really, like, I've been super focused on, like, just trying to get out the album. So it's like, whenever I'm in album mode, recording music, I, I can't even worry about it because it's like, all right, what's marketing look like? What's my role? Look like, I'm always hands in. So I have to, you know, like, know what everything's about to be. So tell me a little bit about growing up in, in Dallas. Like, when did you really get into music and decide that you wanted to pursue this as a career? So my dad always, you know, played music and made beats in the closet. Like, he had, like, a little studio set up in the closet. So I'll be like, what's that noise? You know, like a kid just being nosy. So I walked in there and he was like, yo, like, I really think you should do music, but I was super shy and I was so into sports. I was like, you know, I do it, but I, I think I need a group because like around that time, I'm young. So around that time, I was like, OMG girls, mindless behavior. So I was like, I want to be in a group if I'm going to do music. I can't do a dolo. And he was like, ah, like, you know, it's hard to get other people involved, but you know, like whatever you want is best for you. So I was trying to get a group and it just never happened for me. And then I remember my sophomore year, I seen all my friends dropping music and I was like, oh, Maybe I need to just drop, you know, like I need to do something because I see other people doing it and I know I can do it. Let me try to, you know, like hop on a wave a little bit. So hopped on a wave and everybody around the school was singing my song, Fully Gang, Skrilla. It was like my first song, my homie, we were rapping. Any, anyway, so <laughs> then I, I had made um, the first part of Love Songs. And that's when everybody, you know, was walking around the school really singing like, oh, now she's versatile. Like she can rap and she can sing. And it was kind of just like that. And I got very inconsistent afterwards. And I remember my senior year, I was like, I can't keep doing that. And I just jumped off the porch. Mm -hmm. And I met labels like three months after I graduated. It was crazy. Wow. It was so like it's really like once time. you really put your mind to it, then it took off. I mean, so since you obviously can sing and rap really well, were you conflicted at all about which one you wanted to do more of? Or did it just become obvious to you that you would like to blend both in your music? It did, but everybody was kind of like, yo, like singing is more of a wave right now. I feel like all females, everybody wants to rap at this time, especially when I was like 16, 17, everybody wanted to rap. So they're like, how about you come in the game like singing first and then you show them what else you can do. So I was like, all right, bet, I'm going to sing. And when I, once I started singing, everybody was like, yeah, this is the vibe. And I remember like last year I had met um, my producer, Sonic Major, and he actually helped me find my sound. So it was like, you know, it was really cool to know that I can actually be vulnerable and actually say the life that I'm living on my songs. And I'm super young. I'm 19. So it was like I haven't really lived a long life. Yo, I am personally also a mega Frank Ocean fan. So I'm curious what drew you to him and what other artists really inspired you when you were younger, besides the girl groups at the time. So Frank Ocean, it's the aesthetic about him, you know, like he's it's not like he's a loner but he's like he gives that loner cool vibe like like mysterious mm -hmm. and i feel like about him i think of tumblr i think of pinterest he just gives me 2 a.m summer night vibes and i really love that about him and i just like the fact that his music is such like a nostalgia when you listen to it mm -hmm. it makes you feel a certain type of way i want to hit up your ex or do whatever <laughs> or hit up your ex and then like the <laughs> And then the other artist I was listening to at the time, I was listening to SZA. But I was listening to SZA when she was on SoundCloud, like Sobriety, mm -hmm. um, You Are. It was just a lot of like different tones that I was listening to. And I was like, you know, I want to put this in my music because it was inspiring me at the moment. It was like, this is an influence of sound where it makes you feel like you're melting and you feel like the words and the beat is speaking to you, like in your ears, you know, like just music to the ears, like Picasso. <laughs> How many of your songs are based on things that are happening to you in real life? Majority of the songs that I make, you know, are based on everything that happened to me in real life. Like when I made Park Car Combos, that was just under the influence of, you know, just vibing with somebody and being in the car and explaining your life or just chopping it up, gassing, you know, when you're with your friends or with a significant other, just getting to know them. So when I made that project, it was kind of like, what would you play down low whenever you're in the car just vibing with somebody? Mm. 
And I also love the way that you're open about your sexuality in music. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like some women definitely struggle with that. And, you know, thinking about the ways yeah. people are going to react, it doesn't seem like that bothers you at all, which is amazing. It can't because, you know, I grew up where I always was worried about other people's opinions of me. So to go back to that is like when when you worry about how somebody else feels about, about you, it takes your happiness away because it's like, dang, I feel like I have to be this way to, you know, be cool or prove myself to someone. It's like, no, bro, live your life. How you want to live your life? God made you you. And if you're not happy, nothing's good, you know? It's true. And then when you put your truth out there, of course, it's like a whole fan base who's going to gravitate to you because there's always someone out there who can identify and they're just waiting for someone to put that stuff in music so they have a person to relate to. Since everything has been Mm -hmm. happening so quickly, right? You gained all this viral success. You did sign a deal. How has it been just navigating the industry as a teenager or someone who was a teenager a few months ago? Man, I went through every emotion. You feel me? Like losing friends, breaking up with people, you know, like every emotion that you go through is what I have to speak about in my music because I've seen money change the people around me. I've seen people feel entitled. I've seen like hidden agendas. So it's kind of like just being 19 and having to go through this, it kind of just left me jaded and grew me at a point because it's like you can't give your energy to everybody. Mm. All right. Well, we definitely don't want you to be jaded. It's way too soon for that. <laughs> so I'm glad you figured Super. out the way to deal with it. You, you have a couple other features on the project. People like Isaiah Rashad. I'm also a big fan of him. You have Kay mm-hmm. Camp, Don Tolliver. How did these collabs all come together? Are these all people that you were just personally big fans of? So with the Don Tolliver, it was kind of like my manager at the time. I was telling him, you know, all the artists I wanted to work with. He was like, you want to work with Don T? And I was like, yeah. He was like, all right, bet. Give me a second. And it was just like the next day he was like, yo, we have a session with Don. I just want you to pull up, chop it up with him, you know, just vibe out. And when I pulled up, Don's in the studio, like going ham. Like He's like Wayne. Like, I'm like, dang, like I've never seen an artist literally be like, yo, yeah, I'm going to get on that beat. I'm going to get on that beat. Like any beat he played, mm-hmm. he got in the studio. And I was like, wow, like this is amazing. And he came out the studio and he was like, yo, like you're cold. Like your name's Cash, right? I was like, yeah. He was like, you're super fire. Like. You from Dallas? I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah, like Texas for sure. So it was like, play something. So I started playing, you know, all the tracks, you know, that I was going to put on my album. And I played Euphoria. And he was like, uh, yeah, this the one. <laughs> and so I remember he just, you know, he recorded on that. And that's how I got the Euphoria and Travis joint. And my label was like, you know, like, he going to show you love. He want to do a swap and get on your project. So we had went to Cactus Jack Studios and kind of, you know, vibed out for Grammy Week. And it was just amazing was a good feeling i've never been in a studio that had turf on the floor so it was, it was pretty crazy wow that definitely sounds like a vibe i've never seen that either yeah was, i feel like i was in a, on a football field i was like bro what like i just want to take my shoes off and just like walk around <laughs> what are you looking forward to now the next few months now that the project is out i'm looking forward to you know the world becoming aware of my new sound and who i am and just looking forward to knowing you know like the different opinions of you know, who really loves my music and who really, like, who, who likes I can change? Because I get a lot of DMs like, yo, this song has changed my life. And I really feel as if you're, you know, you're my favorite artist and you influence me. And me. I'm like, that's like, that's super wild. Because it's like, I didn't know my music can do that to people. But the fact that it does makes me feel good about myself. Like to know that you're listening to my music and it made your day, you know, way better or it inspired you to make this type of song, you know? So it just makes me, you know, like happy. Makes my heart pound. It's nice that you can feel the impact directly. That is super dope. Mm -hmm. And this is just your first project. So I'm excited to see what else is coming. Go stream Teenage Fever from Cash Page that is out right now on Apple Music.